is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. It's Wednesday, July 29th, and right now on Good Morning Indiana. Today, one of the first school districts in the state to head back to class will be welcoming students. Working for you, we'll take a look at how Avon Community Schools plans to keep students and staff safe. If you're concerned enough to go and get a test, please protect others around you for those however long it takes to get that resolve back. Only on RTV6 this morning, we continue our conversation with White House Coronavirus Task Force member Dr. Deborah Burks. Hear what she has to say about wait times for COVID-19 testing results. We're just going to keep pushing the same message. With many schools still out there, there are growing concerns about a decrease in child abuse reporting. Working for you, what advocates say you can do to help protect future kids. And black-owned restaurants are getting a much-needed boost this morning. How you can support these local businesses as they try to bounce back from the pandemic. And here at 6 o'clock, we want to thank you for joining us on Good Morning Indiana. I'm Lauren Casey and my friends Todd Clausen and Rafael Sanchez. Social distancing again today and reporting from home. Rafael, good morning to you down in Johnson County. Lauren, good morning to you. It will be a great day to grill out. And Todd says he's going to provide the shish kebabs, the oh. steaks, the burgers. <laughs> Let's check to see what he has cooking up in the weather department this morning. Todd, we are ready for that fantastic Wednesday meal. Yeah, you know, just text me your order and we'll get, we'll get it ordered and we'll get it on the grill. All you just got to do is show up and eat. And uh, it will be a great day. Uh, Raphael and Lauren and everybody at home to get outside and grill or do anything you want to do outdoors and take advantage of today because things start to get a little more unsettled in the weather pattern going forward in uh, the coming days outside right now the sun just starting to come up temperatures are in the 60s in almost all locations only one that is not is Muncie that's right at 70 degrees 67 and Indy 63 in Bloomington right now Lafayette at 65 an absolutely beautiful sunrise taking place there this morning just some high thin clouds there as you look from IMS off towards the east. There's a few spotty showers trying to sneak into northern Indiana, but those will not make it here into central Indiana. That is the good news. They'll kind of hug the state line and move over towards the Fort Wayne area and then eventually off into Ohio. So sunny skies today. High temperatures will be getting up anywhere from about 87 to 90 degrees. Still comfortable today. I think that's kind of the key. A lot of times when you hear 90 degrees, potentially you think, oh, it's going to be hot and very humid. Not the case today. The humidity does come up in the coming days, though, as rain chances increase starting tomorrow. More on that forecast in just a little bit, Lauren. All right, Todd, thanks so much. Let's take a look at traffic as you're heading out on the roads this morning. Here's a look on the south side, south of the 465 ramp system, I-65, a view near Edgewood Avenue, where traffic is moving along up to speed northbound and southbound. Camber just froze up there, but we don't have any crashes. We're monitoring that area, so that is great news. Breaking news this morning, a statewide silver alert has been declared for a Carmel woman. The Carmel Police Department is investigating this disappearance of 91-year-old Kathleen Walsh. Take a look at your screen. She was last seen around midnight and she's described as a white female five feet three inches tall 170 pounds red hair and brown eyes she was last seen wearing a dark purple robe and black slippers police believe that kathleen may be in danger and she may require medical attention if you have any information you're asked to call the carmel police department at 317-571-2500 well, just months ago, Raphael, it was one of the first school districts in our state to close due to COVID-19. And Lauren, today Avon schools are back in session, of course, with some big changes to keep students and the staff safe. Alyssa Donovan is live in Hendricks County there at Avon with the very latest details. Alyssa, good morning. Good morning, Raphael, and we are actually at Avon High School where the doors are going to be opening a little bit later than they have in the past. They're going to open at 735 and this is to help limit students from congregating before class in any common areas. And that's one of the many changes that students at the high school and throughout the district are going to see this school year and on their first day of school today. High school students specifically will also be on a new schedule this year instead of having five or seven periods each day. 
Students will have four periods. This will allow for fewer classes each day, fewer transitions throughout the day, and less time in the hallways. And school administrators say this will also assist with a smoother transition if the school were to close and e-learning becomes necessary. District-wide, students are expected to be in school five days a week, but there is also a plan for e-learning for families who are not ready to send their kids back to the classroom. We will continue to offer an online option to our families who need a little bit more time to transition their student back to school. And students and staff will be expected to have a mask with them at all times and then they will be required to wear those masks during certain situations like on the bus, in the cafeteria and during passing periods. Reporting live, Alyssa Donovan, RTV6. Health is a major priority for many educators. Alyssa, thank you so much. And new this morning, there is a big concern with the wait times for COVID-19 testing. Only on RTV6, Dr. Deborah Burks talked with us at length about the impact of the pandemic and the testing. She's one of the top doctors, as you know, on the White House Coronavirus Task Force. With schools planning to reopen, there's a question whether schools will have access to reliable and quick testing results. Doctor, testing is taking too long. And I say that because in Indiana, for some labs, it's taking five to six days to get results. Isn't that counterproductive to this very message that you're trying to get people to identify them, to self-quarantine? Five to six days is a lot of time. Well, it's too long for the person because obviously they were worried. That's why they came forward to get a test. And so they're gonna worry for five days and I don't want anyone to have to worry for five days. Secondly, it doesn't work for public health. In other words, if you went for a test, you came forward because you thought you were exposed. Maybe you don't have symptoms. You came forward, you agreed to get a test. And now you're still doing everything you used to do and you could have been positive and you would have stopped those things if you thought you were positive. So while we have these delays, we should be telling everyone, if you're concerned enough to go and get a test, please protect others around you for those, however long it takes to you get that result back. And while we work, to really decrease those turnaround times. Work with us to protect others while you're in that unknown period until we can get those testing times down. Dr. Burks tells RTV6 that the task force is looking at deploying tests around the country which can provide results within 24 to 48 hours. And Raphael, child abuse concerns continue as many schools are continuing to hold their classes virtually this fall semester. Our Kelsey Anderson continues our Safely Back to Schools week with what advocates say all of us can do right now to protect Hoosier kids. Kelsey, good morning. Hey, good morning, Lauren. So in May of this year, more than 14,000 calls were made to the DCS hotline. That's compared to more than 22,000 in the same month last year. That is the biggest decrease the department has ever seen in calls to their hotline. And child advocates are concerned as some schools continue to remain virtual, more children are at risk for neglect and abuse. Susan, Susan Runkle with Prevent Child Abuse Indiana says there is no right answer right now. You know, it's absolutely imperative that, uh, you know, we, we do what we need to do to stop the spread of COVID, but then who can we turn to, you know, with, with regard to our children uh, to pay extra attention, um, you know, if, if they're not going to be seen again by our, our typical, you know, professionals. She says if you suspect a child is being abused, you need to call the DCS hotline. All calls are anonymous. She says it's important that everyone stays vigilant and looking out for our youth. Now, Indiana is a mandatory report state, meaning if you suspect a child is being abused or neglected, you are required by law to call that DCS hotline. Their number is 1-800-800-5556. Reporting live, Kelsey Anderson, RTV6. Kelsey, thank you. Now, this week, you do have a chance to hear from Marion County Schools and 
and health officials about safely reopening those schools. Our partners with Radio 1 are hosting a town hall Thursday from 1 to 3 p.m. Local leaders will talk about best practices to keep your child, child safe. You can listen live on Hot 96.3 AM 1310 The Light, 106.7 WTLC, and of course on the RTV6 Facebook page. Raphael? This morning, Black-owned restaurants are getting a much-needed boost. This is Midwest Black Restaurant Week, and so this year, they're emphasizing a takeout and delivery options to keep restaurant staff and customers safe amid the pandemic. Organizers have also waived registration fees for restaurants and open registration to food trucks and meal prep services. You can find a list of the participating restaurants on our website, theindiechannel.com. Well, parents of special needs students have some added pressures when it comes to deciding what's best as the school year approaches. So after the break, we find out what the Indiana Department of Education is doing to make sure that no student falls behind. Todd. And Lauren, as you walk out the door here this morning, grab the sunglasses. You are going to need them this morning. You're going to need them later on this afternoon as well as we have a sun-filled day for us. Unfortunately, tomorrow, you're going to replace the sunglasses with the potential need for an umbrella. We'll talk all about that coming up when Good Morning Indiana continues. The time now is 612. Stay with us. We're back in just a couple minutes. Welcome back. The start of a new school year can be a heart-wrenching time for parents, yes. Raphael, but it makes it even more complicated when you have a child with special needs. The Rebound Indiana is our initiative focused this morning on education, making sure that your kids get what they need beyond the pandemic. Call 6 Investigates' Kara Kenny reports. Many parents are torn and they're looking to school leaders and the State Department of Education for guidance on what to do. I'm ready. You're ready for yeah. what? Marvin Selva's six-year-old daughter, Ambreen, is ready to go back to school. I thought we can say let's go ahead and go but it's very scary like many parents marvin has struggled to decide whether to send ambreen back to perry township's abraham elementary for in-person learning or choose virtual learning i want to prevent her from catching this uh, virus uh, and it's scary to know that you know we're going back to school what's going to happen are they going to do the same thing as i am marvin's decision is further complicated because ambreen has down syndrome and other health issues can she keep the mask on for longer than five minutes? Uh, is she going to not touch everything? Is she not going to grab things and put things in her mouth? Call 6 Investigates found more than 165,000 students in Indiana have a disability. The Arc of Indiana is just one of the groups that advocates for them. Some of them are more susceptible to just illnesses. Um, some of them have sensory issues where they do enjoy a hug. They do enjoy touching not only their classmates, but their teachers. Executive Director Kim Dodson says so far it's a mixed bag from parents. It's 50-50. I think for every two parents we hear from that says, I am absolutely not sending my child back, we get two more parents that say, heck yes, I am. The ARC wants parents to know schools do still have to follow your child child's IEP or individualized education plan, even during virtual learning, even during a pandemic. If your child is not capable of wearing a mask, then that needs to be in an IEP so that the school knows that and knows how to work around that. We asked the Indiana Department of Education what they're doing to make sure students with special needs do not fall behind. We have to remember that our students with special needs still need to be served. And so our cry or our job, our drive from the very beginning is and, and to this day is how do we work with those districts to make sure they understand you still need to provide those services. IDOE spokesperson Adam Baker says when a district fails to provide services, schools can be required to offer them after the fact. That does help try to provide those services when those services could become available. IDOE also created this document full of resources and guidance for special education. Oh, you want to play with the ball then? Yeah. Okay. Ultimately, Marvin decided on virtual learning for his daughter. He knows it will make working from home more difficult and Ambreen will miss out on interacting with her peers. Now I'm like, am I going to be able to teach her like a teacher? I'm not licensed. I'm not trained to be a teacher. 
Can I do the same job that the teacher is going to do at school for us? Marvin is working with Perry Township to make sure the first grader is getting therapies she'd normally get in the classroom. The district told us despite the challenges that have emerged during the pandemic, teachers continued to build relationships with parents. They have ongoing conversations to ensure students get individualized therapies and services, as well as meet academic and social goals. The cheese, the cheese. For Marvin and many parents with children who have special needs, their biggest concern is making sure their kids are included and not treated differently, even during a pandemic. It's just scary, you know. The Department of Education has a team of workers dedicated to mediating disputes between families and local school districts. You can find out how to reach out to IDOE in this story on the RTV6 app and our website, WRTV.com. Reporting at the State House, Kara Kenny, RTV6. Kara, thank you. Well, Pear Township also told us they encourage parent involvement, saying, quote, parents should always contact the student's principal or teacher to discuss general concerns or questions or to request a case conference meeting, end quote, to read their entire statement and to find a list of the state's education resources for special needs students. You can go to this story on the RTV6 app and also on our website, theindychannel.com. Time right now is 619. Let's get a check of our forecast. Todd Klotzen is standing by from home. A kind of a spooky look of the city, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, there's a couple things that you see here in this. A shot from IMS looking back east towards uh, downtown Indianapolis and beyond, Lauren. One is you see the sun obviously coming up, and it's a pretty nice sunrise with just some high thin clouds out there. And then as you look at ground level, you do see a little bit of patchy fog trying to develop. Obviously, we can see through the fog and to the buildings of downtown, so it's not all that thick. And now that the sun's coming up, if there is a little bit of fog trying to develop in some of of uh, your hometowns or locations you're traveling through, just know it's going to uh, burn off pretty quickly. Now, going forward in this forecast, as we go into today, it's really another great day. We'll have lots of sunshine. The humidity comes up a smidge, but it's not all that high today. With temperatures that'll be very warm. But on settled weather returns uh, tomorrow, and it's going to continue through the weekend. As you'll see in your seven day planning forecast shortly, almost every day will have the potential for some rain, but not one day will be a complete washout. That is uh, the good news going forward. Temperatures right now are in uh, the 60s across the area 67 and 80, 63 in Bloomington, 65 is the current temperature in Richmond. The humidity level today, it's kind of in that pleasant to slight humid category so that's why I've kind of highlighted it in between as the dew points will be hovering right around 63 to 64 degrees so you'll notice the humidity it's not super low like it was yesterday afternoon uh, but you will, will not be impacted by it as it's going to be pretty comfortable now as you look at your satellite radar picture we're dealing with some high thin clouds out there currently across the area and as we go throughout the day we'll turn to partly cloudy later on this afternoon but overall it's going to be a very nice Wednesday for us and really the best day in the seven day planning forecast because it's dry and it's also going to be pretty seasonable with high temperatures only a couple degrees above normal there in the mid to upper 80s. But look at the rain chances going forward in this forecast over the next few days. Rain chances are there in that 30 to about 60% category. So we're not talking about the 100% coverage of rain or a real soaking rain over the course of the next few days, but there'll be more clouds around, so it won't be the best pool days. And with the clouds around, temperatures will be running a little bit cooler. Tomorrow morning, some storms come into southern sections. Uh, to the north, it's just some spotty showers here and there. And most of the afternoon hours will be dry. You're just going to have to kind of avoid some of these showers that'll pop up uh, during the course of uh, the day. As we go throughout your next uh, seven days, as I mentioned, a daily chance of storms. Temperatures a little bit cooler, though. In fact, Sunday, even Monday and Tuesday, temperatures could struggle to get back to 80 degrees during the afternoon hours. And then look at some of those lows heading into Sunday and Monday down to right around 60 degrees. Lauren. All right, Todd, thanks so much. Let's take a look at your commute right now. This is a view of the north split from our tower camera, and you can see traffic there is moving along up to speed on the ramp system, so that is great news. Just took a look and no crashes to report around the metro area at this early hour. Stick around, more news coming up just after the break. The time right now is 625. Welcome back. Raphael, it's time to talk about what is trending at 6.
So, Lauren, the next time that uh, Todd decides to go golfing, we will have a new drink as his official caddy. So check this out, a new drink that's going to come out. The king of beers for the king of weather is jumping on the alcohol-free bandwagon. Today, Budweiser is rolling out a national ad campaign for its first non-alcoholic beer. It's called Bud Zero. The beer, which had a soft launch in March, is supposed to taste similar to the regular Budweiser, but as an extra bonus, it will only have 50 calories. A former NBA player, Dwayne Wade, he helped create the taste and the packaging. He says the goal is to give people an option to socialize with drinkers, but skip the buzz or skip the hangover. All there you right. have it. There you go. Pretty interesting. And Barbie here is taking on the 2020 campaign. This is a look at the lineup that features four diverse figures. Mattel, Barbie's parent company, says each doll plays a role in the election process. There's a candidate, a campaign manager, a fundraiser, and a voter. Along with the new brand of dolls, Mattel is teaming up with She Should Run, a nonprofit that supports women running for office. Both organizations say their goal is to inspire and educate future leaders. I want you to meet another leader, Lorna. Good morning to Doug Walker. Doug made a donation of face shields and N95 masks to the Noblesville Fire Department back in May. Doug is among the many people making a difference every day in central Indiana. So make sure that we know about them. Send us in nominations for your hometown heroes. Today, you will get to meet and greet some nice cooler temperatures as Todd Clausen has a great forecast. Yeah, you know, when you walked out the door yesterday, Raphael, you walked out to all that humidity and then it dropped with the passage of that cold front uh, yesterday morning and yesterday afternoon was beautiful. Well, we're taking yesterday afternoon's weather, carrying it over to today, but we're tacking on just a couple degrees to your high temperature. This morning, beautiful sunrise taking place, just a little bit of patchy fog out there, as you can see. Uh, as we go throughout the morning hours, though, we will see the sun burn any fog off very quickly. And look at that already by 10 a.m., uh, up to 77 degrees. Everybody today will be at or above normal. Your average high is 85. So we're all looking at highs today anywhere from about 87 to 90 degrees. It's going to be a really, really uh, nice warm afternoon for us. But the humidity levels not super high today and we have all that sunshine. So get out there and enjoy today because rain chances return to the forecast starting tomorrow. All right, Todd, thanks so much. So the next time you're in the soft drink aisle, you may notice something a little different. It's getting harder to find some of the less popular brands. Consumer reporter John Mattery shows us why the latest shortage now involves Coca-Cola products. And this is all so you don't waste your money. Coca-Cola is the number one selling soft drink in America. But have you noticed some versions of Coke these days are almost impossible to find? It may be the real thing, but some versions of Coke are not very real this pandemic summer. Twitter is filled with complaints from people who can't find their favorite Coke product, including caffeine-free Coke, cherry Coke, and Fresca. Coca-Cola CEO James Quincy told investors they're focusing on their key brands right now, like Coke and Diet Coke, to keep store shelves stocked. They don't want Coke ending up like Lysol wipes, impossible to find. He also said the company may soon discontinue some slow-selling brands, but won't say which ones. But from the Dozen That Stink file, the bigger threat to Coke products, the aluminum can shortage. It's starting to impact all soft drink companies and breweries. Uh, about 95% of our production now is all canned product. And if we can't get the cans, then we can't put anything out. CNN blames soaring demand for canned beverages. From White Claw to craft beers, they're just people drinking more at home and not going to bars. So beer and soft drink makers are filling cans and not kegs right now. And those cans are starting to run low. So if you're finding a less popular brand on a store shelf, you might want to grab a few so you don't waste your money. I'm John Matteries. Good morning, Indiana. This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. Now on Good Morning Indiana on this Wednesday morning, here's a look at your 630 news feed. Metro Police are mourning the loss of an officer who was killed in a motorcycle crash while he was off duty. IMPD says Officer Justin Keene died Tuesday in a crash that happened down in Morgan County. Officer Keene served in the North District and has been with IMPD for five years. A statewide silver alert has been declared for a woman from Carmel. Police are now looking for 91-year-old Kathleen Walsh. She was last seen around midnight. She's white, 
5 feet 3 inches tall and has red hair with brown eyes. She was last seen wearing a dark purple robe and some black slippers. Police believe that Kathleen may be in danger and may require medical attention. If you have any information about this case, you're asked to call the Carmel Police Department right now at 317-571-2500. Four women who accused State Attorney General Curtis Hill of sexually assaulting them at a party more than two years ago are suing Hill once again. The lawsuit was filed in Marion County Civil Court after a similar case was thrown out by a federal judge last month. Hill's law license was suspended earlier this year for 30 days by the Indiana Supreme Court for violating rules of professional conduct. Unions representing employees at 10 chicken processing plants are now suing the USDA. The lawsuit is filed on behalf of poultry workers in six states, including Indiana. The suit challenges a policy allowing companies to increase production speeds. Employees say the increased production put them at risk for COVID-19 and violates the Administrative Procedures Act. The Indianapolis Indians are forming a committee to talk about changing the team name. The nickname dates to the franchise's founding in 1902. It even predates the nickname of the Cleveland baseball team. Team management says the name is derived from the city of Indianapolis, which means city of Indians. The team says it will listen to and exchange ideas regarding the name of the franchise. First here at 631, we want to thank you for joining our team here on Good Morning Indiana. We are midway through our work week. Raphael, good morning to you there down in Johnson County. Lauren, good morning to you as well. Good morning to Todd as well. And Todd, by summer standards, we are looking at a calm, comfortable and cooler day who can say that at the end of july yeah you know it's going to be a terrific day for us here Raphael, and one that you need to take advantage of you mentioned the sunshine we'll have that from start to finish we bring rain chances back into the forecast starting tomorrow here's a live look outside from downtown and to the north and look at all that sunshine just a few fair weather clouds across the area right now and temperatures this morning that are sitting in the 60s so it's really uh, going to be a comfortable day for us 67 in indy 63 in bloomington these temperatures running a little bit cooler than they were yesterday and we don't have all that humidity like we had yesterday morning that humidity didn't really fall until the afternoon hour so a great start to our day there'll be a few fair weather clouds at times but all that rain stays off to our west for the day today. And with the sunshine, temperatures will warm very quickly here throughout the course of the day today. We're looking at about 83 degrees already by the noon hour with high temperatures later on this afternoon, topping off anywhere from about 87 to 90 degrees across the area. Lauren. All right, Todd, thanks so much. Let's take a look at traffic on I-69. This is a view near Cumberland Road tour northeast where everything's moving along smoothly, both northbound and southbound. Taking a look around the metro area right now, there are no crashes to slow down your Wednesday commute. So let's take a turn now to the very latest information surrounding the coronavirus. This morning, state health officials confirm more than 800 new cases of COVID-19. That brings the running total to nearly 64,000 cases since the pandemic began here. Health officials also say 16 more Hoosiers have died from the virus. Since the pandemic began, more than 2,700 people in Indiana have died from COVID-19. New this morning, the latest COVID-19 spike shows that not only the elderly, but younger Hoosiers are getting the coronavirus. Dr. Deborah Burks tells RTV6 that one of the reasons she supports the closing of bars and other public places where people gather is because that's where most younger people gather. Burks is the coordinator for the White House coronavirus response. We talked to her about misconceptions that people have about the virus, among them that younger people are trouble free from COVID-19, which is absolutely not true. We are seeing a lot of younger people test positive. And so people are saying, so what, Sanchez? That's me. Young people will recover quickly. What's the danger? They'll go to the hospital, maybe, maybe not. Why are we worried about young people who, will not, uh, who are not 65 and don't have those complications? Well, young people are Americans too. So we are seeing young people with higher rates of infection right now because they were out and about more and had more interactions. And fortunately, many of our 65-year-olds and above, and many people with comorbidities, heard our call back in March say, continue to shelter, protect yourself, ensure you stay protected. But what we're seeing in Florida, and I just got off the phone with them earlier today, 
We're seeing what was young people now becoming the mothers and fathers are getting infected, the aunts and uncles and the grandparents. And the grandparents now are coming into the hospital desperately ill. And two thirds of the individuals that are coming to the hospital des desperately ill were infected in their households. The tomorrow, the possible vac vaccines that are now on the horizon and why the flu season is going to make this fall, she says, very, very complicated. Lauren? Raphael, while Marion County school districts are among those holding off on starting school in person due to the pandemic, students in Avon, they're back in the classroom today. It's one of the first school systems to reopen with new safety and healthy plans in place. And so our Alyssa Donovan is joining us live in Avon this morning with more about what this day is going to look like for students and teachers there. Alyssa, good morning. Good morning. They are going to be experiencing some changes today, some new protocols. Like many districts, Avon Community Schools has come up with some new protocols and health safety uh, things that kids are going to have to stay to as they head into the classrooms today. The Avon School Board met on Sunday to review their protocols and decide if they were ready to open on the first day of school like they planned, which is today, and they decided they were ready for it with their new changes. Now, students do have the option to to do e-learning, but their plan notes that the e-learning curriculum will be limited and cannot mirror the full experience of in-person instruction. Those students who do attend class in person will be required to have a mask with them at all times. These will be worn uh, in certain areas like riding the bus and in the hallways during passing periods. Students will be placed in seating charts in classrooms, on buses, and in the cafeteria. The district has also added hand sanitizing stations and will be having students wash their hands throughout the day. You will see in their plans additional cleaning protocols, changes in the school and classroom environments, and other ways that the schools will look different this fall. These are necessary for now as we get our children back into school safely this fall. Staff will also be undergoing some training to recognize symptoms of COVID-19 as well as some screening measurements in the classroom. And if a student or staff member tests positive at any time for COVID-19, they will be asked to quarantine for 14 days and the Hendricks County Health Department will be called in to do contact tracing. Reporting live, Alyssa Donovan, RTV6. Alyssa, thank you so much. As we continue to cover education here on Good Morning Indiana, new this morning, we're hearing from the Franklin School Superintendent here in Johnson County about changes for the new school year. All students in grades K through 6 will be able to report to classes five days a week if they want to. But middle school and high school students will be learning on a different plan involving in-school and also learning online. Last names A through K will attend classes now Mondays and Tuesdays. They will learn online Wednesday through Friday. Last names L through Z in middle school or high school in Franklin will go to school on Thursdays and Fridays and attend online classes Monday through Wednesday. Every 20 days, how are things going in that hybrid model? And then we can bring kids back. And for their future, they're going to see that that's going to happen. We, there are always going to be curveballs in life. Nobody would have predicted the pandemic a year ago. But here we are, we're adapting to it. We're making good and not perfect. And our kids will continue to rise up and, and, and be better for it. Our teachers are amazing. And I think we've seen that throughout the, the journey here. Middle and high school students will not be allowed into the school buildings on Wednesdays. And that will allow the custodial staffs in those buildings to do some deep cleaning. And this week, you'll have a chance to hear from Marion County Health and Educator officials about safely reopening schools. Our partners at Radio 1, they're hosting a town hall tomorrow from 1 to 3 p.m. Local leaders will talk about best practices to keep your children safe. You can listen live on Hot 96.3, AM 1310 The Light, and 106.7 WTLC, and of course, the RTV6 Facebook page. Well, more children are learning at home instead of going to school, and that's led to a drop in reported cases of child abuse. Next, our Kelsey Anderson is live with more on what you can do to protect Hoosier students. It is 6.39. You're watching Good Morning Indiana right here on RT6.
Advocates for victims of child abuse are sounding the alarm as schools begin to reopen and some kids will stay home virtually are learning, of course, that's where the advocates are concerned about, Lauren. That's right, and they say it's more difficult to spot abuse when kids are not in the classroom. And so our Kelsey Anderson is joining us live this morning to continue our Safely Back to School Week with more on what all of us can do to help this situation. Kelsey? Hey, good morning. So in March, when this pandemic started, Call 6 investigates found that the uh, calls to the DCS hotline were down 11%, a statistic that is still alarming to child advocates. Here we go again, here we go still. Sandy Runkel with Prevent Child Abuse Indiana says as things remain closed and children remain at home, they are pushing the same message. If there is going to be, you know, uh, continued stay at home measures, then we're just asking people to continue to be vigilant. She says if you suspect a child is being mistreated, you should call DCS at 1-800-800-556. Everyone is essential in keeping children safe. And go ahead and make that report if you have concerns, because it could just be a situation where the family just does need some some extra resources or some extra support. Runkle says not to worry about if you are wrong, just follow your gut feeling. If you think about it, you, you do want to be wrong, right? <laughs> because that means that the child's safe and the family's doing okay. But that's something that isn't for us to make that judgment. Now, Indiana is a mandatory reporting state, which means by law, if you if you suspect that a child is being abused or neglected, you are required to call that DCS hotline. Again, that number is 1-800-800-5556. Reporting live, Kelsey Anderson, RTV6. Uh, Kelsey, thank you so much. A construction project, hotel project in Speedway appears to be on hold. And now people who live near that construction site are wondering why it's on hold. This is located right across the street from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Those who live in the area say there hasn't been any work done to the half-built structure, they say, in almost a year. Back in January, town leaders told us the delay was due to financial problems being experienced by the developer, Luftus Robinson. Now, Speedway says a potential partner is negotiating with that developer. People who live in the area hope that that's the case. I don't think I've ever seen people working at the construction site. Um, I moved in last fall. It's kind of an eyesore, um, but it's probably got the, the making of something really spectacular if it gets finished. The Tata Speedway has not released details about the ongoing negotiations. The developer has so far not responded to our calls or messages for comment. Lauren? Well, if you're planning a trip to Disney World, now that the park is back open again, we do have a heads up for you. We'll show you yet another change to their policy on masks, including an outright ban on one popular type of face covering. The COVID-19 pandemic forcing the cancellation of more beloved events. Next, how the holidays will look a lot different in Carmel, Indiana later this year. But first, let's check on today's forecast, which may just be absolutely beautiful, Todd Clausen. You know, it's the best day that I have in the seven-day planning forecast, Raphael. So definitely take advantage of the sunshine today, the seasonable temperatures, and the humidity levels that are going to be fairly low. Great day to work outside on the patio or maybe just get outside and exercise at some point if you can throughout the day today because storm chances return to the forecast tomorrow. And once they arrive, they're here to stay for the foreseeable future. More on your extended forecast coming up when Good Morning Indiana continues right here on RTV6. Well, for the second time since reopening to the public, Walt Disney World in Orlando has updated its rules for masks. Earlier this month, Disney banned people from walking around the park with their food and drinks as a way of getting around the mandatory mask rule. Well, now these signs are popping up around Disney's Florida parks. They say face coverings must cover your nose and mouth and be secure under your chin. Disney's also now banning the use of those neck gaiter masks, using triangle bandanas as face covering or any other mask that has a valve or mesh or holes of any kind. 
kind. Disney is also implementing mandatory temperature checks for all guests in its sit-down restaurants, including those at Disney hotels. Carmel, Indiana is canceling a number of its beloved events due to the coronavirus pandemic. That includes two wintertime favorites, the Carmel Chris Kindle Market and Ice at Center Green. Both events were scheduled to begin mid-November. Organizers admit it is early to make that call, but it was necessary to provide enough of a heads up to their vendors or suppliers. Other Carmel events canceled include Carmel on Canvas, Music on the Monon, and Carmel's Oktoberfest. At 6.50, let's check in with Todd and see what we can expect for our midweek forecast. You know, a lot of sunshine in the forecast for us again today, Lauren, and that is the good news. Going forward in this forecast, as you see behind me here, rain chances are going to kind of ramp up to moderate levels as we get into Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then beyond into uh, the coming days as we push into the second half of the weekend and into uh, next week. With that said, we're not looking at any all-day rains. Live look this morning from downtown to the north shows plenty of sunshine out there, some high fair weather clouds, and that is just about it. As far as the cloud cover goes and temperatures this morning, all within a couple degrees of each other for the most part. I think that thermometer in uh, Muncie continues to run uh, a little warm, probably needs to be recalibrated. But temperatures for the most part between 63 and 67 degrees across uh, the area. The humidity this morning is fairly low, so it's very comfortable as well. Now going forward in this forecast, as far as the dew points go, uh, which is a measure of moisture in the atmosphere, uh, when they're in the 60s, you're in pretty decent shape. Once you start getting to that 67 degree mark and closer to 70, it's starting to get a little more uncomfortable. So you do notice that the humidity comes up a little bit late in the day and into the early morning hours as the clouds will start to increase and then we'll start to bring those rain chances in tomorrow. A few specks of green on the radar there. Don't worry about that. That's just some feedback. Otherwise, skies are mainly clear across the area. And as we expand out those showers moving towards Angola, Indiana, and northern portion of the state, uh, they will miss us. They won't make it here into central Indiana. Highs today anywhere from about 86 to 90 degrees, depending on where you are. Bloomington, Bedford, Seymour, Columbus, you have the best potential to get to that 90 degree mark. And then as we go forward in this forecast, uh, we'll see tomorrow's rain chances increase. I think the best chance of rain tomorrow is going to be southern locations. To the north, you're not completely rain free, but everything to the north is going to be a little more spotty in, in nature. So I think I wouldn't cancel any plans tomorrow, but just know that there are some rain chances in the forecast with the added cloud cover tomorrow. Temperatures will be running a little bit cooler as well as highs will be in the low 80s. And we really stay a little on the cool side or below normal through the weekend and into next week with temperatures only right around 80 degrees. Daily chance of rain after today, but no day is a complete washout. And then look at some of those low temperatures as we head into Monday and Tuesday of next week. Some areas, Lauren, could be only in the upper 50s. All right, Todd, pretty interesting. Thank you so much. Let's take a look at traffic as you're heading out on the roads right now. I-465 here in West 46th Street. This is on the northwest side where everything's traveling up to speed. The good news right now around the metro area, I'm not monitoring any crashes or delays to slow down your Wednesday morning drive. It is 6.53. Stick around. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back, Raphael. Maybe you think the best way to start your day is with a cup of coffee and a bowl of cereal. Sure. Oh, sure. Well, soon you'll be able to do both without having to brew a pot of Joe. Uh, so get ready to kick off your day with why not Dunkin' Donuts cereal. Why not? <laughs> and it's not just any ordinary cereal. Dunkin' has teamed up with, the, with Post to create two new cereals. Both are made with Dunkin's coffee, and yes, that means both of them have lots of caffeine. There are two flavors, mocha and latte and caramel macchiato, each made with flavored corn puffs and marshmallows. The cereals that can help give you that morning buzz should be at your grocery store sometime in August. I was hoping that they would come like with a, a glazed or a jelly donut, but that's okay. I, I can deal uh, with yeah. the two options for now. I agree. My <laughs> weird personal fact is I've never liked cereal. Never been a cereal person, so guess I won't be trying that. <laughs> I know, it's kind of weird.
I'm, I'm just going to add this so. to your list of quirks here, Lauren. Yeah, <laughs> right at the end of the show. <laughs> no green bean casserole. <laughs> yes. so, all right. Uh, outside right now, we're dealing with understand. pretty comfortable conditions across the area. The humidity is low. Temperatures are in the 60s. We're going up to about 88 degrees for your high temperature this afternoon. But you do notice in your seven-day planning forecast, daily chance of rain starting tomorrow, but no days of washout. Also cooler with highs around 80. All right, Todd, thanks, and thank you for watching. We'll be back here in 25 minutes. Have a great one.